So we're out filming today with an F355 Challenge car. I've never driven a 355 before. I actually drove here in James's 430 Scuderia, which I imagine is a completely different kind of animal. Yet this is basically a road legal race car, except the interior hasn't been stripped out. It's kind of been kept kind of based on the road version, but pretty much everything else from the F355 Challenge race cars. So what I'm gonna be doing after he's finished filming his piece here, I'm gonna be taking this out because I'm gonna be driving it up and down the road while he films the drive-bys. Yes, it's not usually James driving the car up and down the road when you see it from the outside. Um, often it's me, often it's the owners of the cars. And let's face it, it's not the worst thing in the world to have to drive a car like this up and down the road briskly for the purposes of YouTube. How was that, James? Yeah, I think I did okay. I think you did fantastic as you always do. Ah, uh, yeah, editing makes me look a lot better than I am. Well, it's not in one take. <laughs> so James is rigging up the cameras on the exterior of the car. Five cameras, two forward, two back, and one on the exhaust. We've got one down here for the nice low sort of road flying past at high speed shot where basically at 30 miles an hour it looks like you're doing 100. And we've also got uh, this one on the uh, bonnet pointing at James so you can kind of still see him talking. These will all be synced up with a... a very cute horn. <laughs> Actually, I haven't heard it. It's like the 550s. <laughs> we've got this one looking back and we have got the specially modified rear exhaust camera that's got a wind sock on it, wind muff, dead cat as they say. I think it's more of a dead moth, it's not very big. A, do a dead moth, yeah, <laughs> that's about right. And I'm doing a bonus because I bought some new cameras recently, so this is quite a special car. I'm quite looking forward to driving, I'm going to get another shot I think. Nice. What do you reckon, intakes? Yeah, and intake. This is a modified camera as well, so this has got a different lens on, so it's not as wide angle as the rest of them. Ooh. So it should look pretty darn good. See, fun fact as well, if you look at these cars, you'll notice they do still have side strakes. See, like the uh, Testarossa and the 348, you know, famous these big strakes in the side. Well, the 355 still has them. They're just buried right back here. Mm. It was a legislation thing. They were worried the Americans wouldn't let them have such a big opening on the side of the car because mm. you know they hoover up children or something so that's where the strakes came from it was actually getting around a uh, uh, a legal issue oh, that rear wing look at that that's amazing it's a very fine weave isn't it that one mm -hmm. ferrari do like their sort of finer weave on their on their carbon and you say kevlar front and rear bumpers yes i really like the color on these these wheels do you know what actually the wheels are not the color i thought they were yeah i didn't think they were gray you know, because of the way that they ref reflect the light off of this gravel, I thought they had a sort of like bronzy copper tint to it, but no. Oh, with bronze wheels though. That would, that would just be perfect. If the owner is watching this, bronze wheels, like dark, like nice dark, dark bronzy color. Very, very mm. cool. Right, what's the plan now? Plan is you're going to head out in this and then come back and we'll do drive-bys. Let's do it. Right, so I am now in the car. Honestly, I've fallen in love with it. Now, a few days ago, as at the time of filming this, not necessarily when you get to watch it, we were at the Ferrari Challenge at Silverstone, watching the modern Challenge cars, which were a completely different kind of animal. They are purebred race cars, not road cars converted into race cars, but they are built specifically as race cars. Now the 355 Challenge is a very, very different thing. It was essentially a road car that was then converted into a race car. That meant that if you didn't get a factory race car, you could still buy the Challenge kit and fit it to your own car, which is what's been done to this. And James will go into a lot more detail about that on his video. And of course, in case you hadn't noticed, this is left-hand drive, which in the UK isn't ideal. However, the factory race cars were largely left-hand drive. That doesn't mean you have to have the converted cars as left-hand drive. There are right-hand drive examples. And I think if I was gonna get one of these, that would be my first choice. But in a way, this is slightly more authentic. And you might think, oh, well, they built more left-hand drive cars because there's more left-hand drive markets and so on. I'm sure that's a very good reason. However, there's actually a really good reason from a race driver's point of view as to why you want a left-hand drive car. 
And that's because most race circuits are clockwise. And by sitting on the left-hand side of the car, that gives you a much better view through right-hand corners, of which on a clockwise circuit, there are just more right-hand corners. So for the race cars, you kind of wanted them to be left-hand drive, generally speaking. And you might think, oh, surely you'd want to be closer to the apex. Well, actually, no, because racing drivers, they know where the other side of the car is. And what they really need more than anything else is the ability to look well beyond the apex because you don't look at the apex as a racing driver. You look at where your exit is, where you're going to end up beyond the apex. And I'll be honest, it's taken a little bit of time for me to get used to driving this in left-hand drive Form, but I'm pretty used to it now. I'm sort of very comfortable keeping it over to the left and away from anyone else. You are slightly central to the car. There's a bigger gap on the left-hand side here where the handbrake happens to be down on the bottom left-hand side of the seat. And the passenger seat is a little further over that way. And that gives you quite a nice view out of the front of this car. It's actually really, really good. And I don't feel quite so compromised sitting on the left-hand side of the car because of it. But despite sitting slightly further to the right, the pedals are still further to the right. The clutch is pretty much central to me. The brake is in line with my right foot and the throttle is off to the right hand side. But it's these flaws that kind of give this car its period authenticity. At first, the steering was not in a position that I like. I kind of prefer that more racing driver position, that sort of 100 degree or 90 degree bend in your arm and with the steering wheel ideally a little higher. This isn't as high as I'd like it, but that's because I think I'm not sitting as low as I'd prefer. And that's one of the things that I would do differently in this car. I think I would want bucket seats in this car, not necessarily the factory bucket seats, but uh, I would definitely want bucket seats rather than these comfort seats. There's enough adjustment in the rake of the steering wheel to help me find a comfortable position. I'm not massively tall, I'm about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and I can, get my hands out of the way of my knees. But the compromises in the seating position all goes out the window as soon as you put your foot down because the sound of this thing is incredible. of the handling it's great i was expecting also for the ride to be much more compromised than this but it's not it's actually really just surprisingly better than you'd think from what i understand it's got the challenge suspension on it but i think it's the slightly chunkier tires that kind of make the ride a little bit more manageable a little bit more compliant personally i would have been happy for it to be a bit stiffer and harsher but it's actually quite pleasant and you don't feel like you're giving up any handling. Now in the corners, it does push on just a little bit. The tires on this, I think are a little older and I don't know if it's had an alignment done recently or not. So I'm not going to judge that too much. It's not terrible. It's just, just a tiny, tiny little bit of understeer, tiny little bit of understeer. I would like it a little bit twitchier, but I'm sure that's something that could be adjusted by some very clever geometry folks, such as the folks at Center Gravity. But other than that, the car feels really balanced. It handles beautifully, much better than I would expect for a car from this era. But hey, it's basically a race car. It's essentially a modified car, but done in the Ferrari purest way with authentic Ferrari race parts, not race inspired, actual race parts. And for me, that's kind of what makes this cool. It's beautiful to look at. The color is bellissima. The wing on the back just makes it look super cool. And despite its age, this car still pulls in the attention that you would expect any Ferrari to. Earlier, we were driving along. There were some school kids that had just come out of school and they all stopped and they were all waving and they were clearly, clearly excited by this car. And to me, that means this car is still 
just as much a supercar as it ever was. And because it's got all the Ferrari Challenge parts on it, it's just as much the race car for the road that its owner, I'm sure, intended it to be. I love this car, but sadly, now is the point in time where I have to give it back. Right, so we have both driven the car now. I'm curious to know, what do you think I would like and dislike about this? Likes, noise, slightly stiffer suspension, looks. Dislikes, uh, comfy squidgy chairs, um, the steering wheel that doesn't have much adjustment in it, uh, and um, oh, I don't know, uh, it's not that fast, really. Not in a straight line. No. That's what I would say. Yeah. Pretty much bang on, uh, although I did find that you could actually get just enough adjustment in the steering wheel for me to actually be happy with it. I really can't think of anything that you wouldn't like about this car. I think it is, I, I, I walked up and I said, James, that's a bit of you right there. And he said, I know it's annoying. I think it makes great sound. I think it's a bit louder than what you'd normally go for, but in a car like this, it's supposed to make a noise. No, it's actually not as bad as you think. It's actually quite loud inside and mm. not that loud outside. Ah. It also, as you sort of get the RPMs up, mm. I think it actually gets quieter. Yeah, that's true. Certainly inside, like at low RPM, that really resonates. Yep. But you can tell like when they design that exhaust, it's for race cars, like race cars don't spend any time at 2000 RPM, so they really don't care how noisy it is. Yep. Um, whereas in that, like, yeah, you're all the time, but when you're actually on the move, it was fine. It, yeah. it sounds pretty close to normal 355 actually volume wise. But yeah, and I thought, oh, well, because James often just hates a really terrible ride, but it doesn't have a terrible ride. It's actually way more comfortable than I thought it was going to be. I was shocked. I was, when they told me it's still got the challenge suspension, like I was absolutely, I thought it was going to be like, yeah, it's a lovely car, but there's a reason it's a race car suspension, not a road car, but. That's, yeah, really compliant. Yeah, I think it's the slightly chunkier tires. That's what I think mm -hmm. it is. Just yeah. takes a little bit of the roughness out of it. It helps, and I think it's also still got the original adaptive dampers. So I think it's just on the springs and the solid bushings. I don't think they're different dampers. I don't know for sure. It's kind of hard to find out, but um, yeah. So it's still got an edge of compliance from the road car, which, which I really appreciate. And of course, if you haven't seen James's review, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, make sure you check the link in the description. And if you've enjoyed this particular review, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, choose notifications on all videos, and we'll see you next time on JM and Friends. Yeah.